Okay, so what we're going to do here in Illustrator first of all is we're going to have a look at how we do an image trace. And then we're going to look at how we can use the magic wand to separate out the different parts of the image trace into different layers. Okay, And the reason we're doing that is because eventually we want to fill each of those shapes with different letters. We're going to do that in Photoshop. So we're going to copy and paste those different layers into a Photoshop document and then use the transparency of those layers as a mask for our um, for our text here. Okay, and we've just got A's and X's because they've got a slightly different texture. So come back in here and we're going to grab our image and then go to um, image trace. Okay, we'll choose the arrow here and we'll go for um, say six colors to keep it relatively simple. Okay. So basically now the trace is just kind of one block and we need to expand it out so we can separate the different so we can select and then separate the different elements. So we're going to go to object and expand and the object and the fill. So we'll just leave that as is. Click OK. And now we can select these different elements. Okay. We're using the direct selection tool here, but if we grab the selection tool, it's still going to select it as one <coughs> entire thing. So we're going to go to object and ungroup so that we can uh, we'll just go to expand again and ungroup until we can select the individual elements. Sometimes it takes a while to get everything completely ungrouped, so we'll just leave it like this because we can still select it with individual arrows or with the magic wand tool which is what we're going to use to grab the different colors. Okay. So we'll just deselect everything and just think about which areas we're going to select. So we're going to try and select the, just to keep this example simple, um, my silhouette here okay, and then the background uh, down here and then the sky has three different elements and three different layers. So we'll grab our layers panel. Okay. Pull this up. Okay. So basically we're going to make a selection and then we're going to move it to another layer so we can work with it in different ways in Photoshop. So we'll make a new layer, grab the magic wand tool, okay, and then we've got our selection here. If we grab the direct selection tool and hold down now, just want to remove some of these selections. So this is all saying it's one object, so I want to expand that and try and ungroup that so it's selecting different sections. So because it's the same color, it's kind of selecting the whole thing. So actually for this one, I'm just going to use the selection tool. And then if I come up to the layers panel, I can move that selection up to a different layer. And actually we can see what we've got selected by turning that off. So then we can keep coming back and just grabbing more of what we want up to that second layer. Okay, and gradually we'll have an empty silhouette now. Okay, so this is the uh, person silhouette. Okay, and come in here as well, and we'll just keep using the direct selection tool actually because it's I only made six colors, so it's select. That's why it's selecting all this area as well. So it depends on what your image is as to whether you can select more or less of it. So.
but the nice thing about separating things out in this way is that when we then work with each of the layers, they'll be in the same place. We're not moving the, the actual location of them. select the rest of this brown area and we'll just kind of do this a bit more roughly just so we can move on to the next step. So we've kind of mixed in some of the stuff down here but I'm not going to worry about that. So now we've got the sky pretty much all as one layer. Okay. And now before we copy this into Photoshop, I'm just going to make one more layer here where I'm going to draw a box all the way around the outside, just with an outline, so that when I copy any one particular layer, it's going to basically um, keep everything kind of registered in the same position. So that now. Jump into Photoshop, a new project file, and paste that in as a smart object. Okay. And then now we'll grab our other layers so we can just cycle through these. And we could go into more detail here if we wanted to. They should register perfectly as the individual layers in Photoshop because we've drawn that box around the outside. Okay. So now with these uh, layers, the issue we've got the issue that we've got is that um, basically if we put text over the top of that and kind of use a clipping mask it's going to keep the the kind of texture in this uh, bigger so like all the colors and stuff like that we want to kind of get rid of all that as well so I'm going to create a new layer do shift F5 and just fill it as white click OK turn that into the clipping mask and then just do a Merge visible, which is going to just merge it so it's a completely white layer. Okay, so when I layer text over top of it, it's just going to be a nice clean sort of black text. Okay, so then we'll do the same for this one. Check the five, right? Create a clipping mask, merge visible. We turn off the other layers, otherwise, you'll merge everything. Okay. And then merge visible one last time. And then now, over the top of each of these layers, so it just looks white now with the background, we can create our text layer. So we'll grab a type layer, just pull that out across the whole screen. Okay. And then we'll grab, first of all, our A's. Paste those in, and straight away we start to see the layer above. But then, if we right click here with 
this and use. Oops. from just type apparently. Didn't realize that. So then we'll actually take a step back. I'm just going to use that type layer again so it's registered in exactly the same spot for the other layers. And then we'll convert them individually into smart objects. Should get a nice. Yes, yeah, so we've got A's up here and X is down there. So it's not working quite so well with those. We might play with the type and just kind of see which one works better. So, for instance, if we took those X's and double click in here, we can edit a smart object. This type. So now we can make this bold just to accentuate the effect. Go back and now you can see how the type is kind of following the silhouette. So now we'll do the last layer and just hide those other ones. So now let's change this to something else. So Let's try a G. Make that old italic. Change the space. So I'm just uh, copying it and pasting it. Selecting it all. Then doing it in bigger copy and pastes. Okay, so now we can convert that to a smart object. Some of the effect. Now, if we wanted to accentuate the effect there, um, so at the top, I think we've got the silhouette of me. Then, what we could do is go to the layers below and then do something like this, where we just kind of add a hue saturation adjustment layer. but not the X's. So, I'm not sure why just the lightness wasn't working, but we can also colorize it so just so you can see the effect that's happened there, where we've masked off the different letters. So they have that kind of nice flow of being in the same position as the other letters below. So I think that's roughly what we're looking for, um, but maybe with some work we can get a better kind of rendition or use a better typeface to get that to work. <laughs>